Agents are worried about interrupting their leads by phone right now. What are you saying when reaching out to them? You know, that's a great question. And uh, the key thing during this pandemic is the approach you need to be taking is one of care and concern and not of looking for their business. Um, I'll, I'll give you an example. We're still getting some solicitation calls. And they used to be annoying before the pandemic. How much more annoying are they now during the pandemic? And they're inappropriate. So if uh, you're worried about interrupting or insulting the leads right now, it could be your approach. So change your approach where you're coming from a place of compassion and care and ask genuine questions about how you can help. And in this way, you're not going to insult them or interrupt them. Does that make sense? What are some of the genuine questions you've asked on a call? One of the first genuine questions I would ask is like, uh, uh, how are you guys doing as far as, you know, uh, you know, gloves, masks, uh, san you know, uh, sanitizer, um, toilet paper? I know there seems to be a shortage of that. I mean, how, how are you folks doing with that? Because uh, uh, we can probably direct you towards some resources that can help you with that. And uh, we're actually uh, starting a project here at our own house. Where we're starting to make our own masks. And, uh, and if uh, do that, perhaps we could send you a mask. Could you share some ideas about how to run a real estate business during a lockdown? That's a great question. Um, how do I even run a business during a lockdown? How do I, you know, and you're right. I mean, we're pretty much stuck in the water right now, but that doesn't mean that you have to be frozen. So one of the most important things I think you could do right now, and this is a golden time because usually in most, most cases, we don't have the time to work on our business or look deeply into our business and find out, you know, What's, what's the things that's actually delivering an ROI and what are the things that aren't? So one of the first things we did is we, we cut all non-essentials immediately and cut back everything. So that's, that's the first thing I would suggest doing is trying to cut back anything that's non-essential uh, because right now cash is king. We don't know when uh, you know, the loans are gonna come in. We don't know when the payments are gonna come in. So you've gotta, you're gonna protect yourself and protect your assets and do that first and foremost. Number two, I would definitely focus on staying connected with other groups, stay connected with mastermind groups. You know, uh, uh, Real Geeks have great groups. There's other mastermind groups out there as well, too, that you, know, you need to stay. Don't be an island and don't be isolated because what will happen is that you'll start, you know, listen to the news. And of course, the news never gives you anything that's good. It's all negative and it's going to create a negative mindset. And lastly, that's exactly what. You, the, probably the most important thing is protecting your mindset. And uh, how we do that here is that we read a lot of positive, uh, a lot of positive books. Uh, we exercise every single day. Uh, we're actually more cognizant of a healthy diet now than we were before. And uh, because of that, we're actually we're actually getting healthier and losing weight during this. So those those key three things: you know, cut, you know, cut non-essentials, stay connected and also uh, protect your mindset. How do you define an expense versus an investment? I'm gonna pass it over to Fran because uh, she she's, uh, she's, does a great job of uh, managing our expenses and making sure, you know, cutting the fat. We actually started this about a year ago, didn't we, Fran? Because we saw this, not the pandemic coming, but we saw a recession coming. And so we started changing mm -hmm. things in our yeah. life. Yeah, you know, there's been talk for so long about, you know, we're, we're going to get closer and closer to a recession. So we started looking at everything last year. We saw a little bit of a slowdown. And, um, you know, first things were our personal needs. So, so we cut, you know, some of our car payments. Um, we just reduced some of our household expenses. That was number one because we saw it coming. And then um, starting of the year, it was still a little bit on the slow side and then this hit. Um, so we're happy that we did the things we did preparing but right away after going through 2008, you know, I knew right away what we had to cut in our business. And a lot of the things weren't just cutting but maybe renegotiating with some of our vendors of what, on the, on the um, items that we needed for our business. So um, we cut anything that wasn't bringing a good ROI to our business, number one. You know, we've had things that sometimes we subscribe to and we just leave it 
and we don't use it, and those are the things we cut. The, the essentials, like Real Geeks and a lot of our other systems that we use for our business, we left in place. Um, some of the other ones that, you know, should we, we're not gonna be using it too much, but we still maybe can utilize it during this time. We renegotiated asking what they're doing uh, to help their clients, and most of them already had a plan in action. You know, we're going to, you know, uh, cut our fees right now, or we're going to uh, waive our fees for the next 60 days, whatever it is. And um, that's how we cut our um, non-essentials and kept our essentials for our business. Um, and that's helped a lot. It really takes a, a load off of what we have to pay out and our expenses so that we can stay afloat, get through this, and prosper from there. How are you delivering the facts of the market to your clients while being the voice of reason during the COVID-19 pandemic? How do, how do you keep people calm is delivering exactly what you said is facts, not opinion. Uh, the reason people are, are nervous and un, unsure is because they don't have, they're not, we don't have the information to make us sure that everything will be okay. One of the things that we, uh, that we supply is that let people know that, hey, in spite of all of this, there's still business going on. I checked, you know, the closings just the last two weeks since we've been shut down and we've had 1,500 closings. So business hasn't come to a complete dead stop. There's still business being conducted. And so the, the tools I would suggest you is use your MLS. Look, uh, look what, what's, uh, you know, what's sold, what goes under contract, what are some of the new listings? And this all, you can also share that with your potential sellers that are apprehensive about putting their home on the market and say, well, listen, you know, I completely understand why you don't want to put your home on the market, you want to wait, but would you be surprised to find out just last week that 560 sellers decided to put their home on the market? Now, would you rather wait until 6,000 put their home on the market or be in front of that? What is the most important thing you've learned from this experience so far? I, I think probably the most important thing I would, I would project is that uh, it's, it's, it's forced us all to be together when we, all of us usually have separate and busy lives. And of course, you know, we've got, we've got three adult children and Fran and I, even though we do work together, sometimes we're off in different directions together. So it's, uh, it's, it's actually brought us a lot closer together, uh, which has been great. We've actually started playing board games which we, together, which we haven't done in years. Uh, we've got a jigsaw puzzle, which I think will never be completed, but at least we started. It will never be completed. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I think the, probably the, the, the greatest thing about this is looking at the positive sides of it. I mean, you know, for, for folks that are by themselves, um, uh, reach out to others. Listen, there, there's some really clever and creative ways now that we're doing. Uh, last week, we, uh, with some of our dearest and closest friends that live in St. Louis, uh, we set up a FaceTime happy hour, and uh, we had the we had absolute best time ever. I mean, it, it was just dear friends. We go to Hawaii with them periodically, and he's a great friend of mine that I, I played music with forever. And uh, we didn't another, know how it was turn out. Yeah, another ahead. another thing is uh, Bill picked up, is picking up his guitar now, right. so he, which he hasn't done in years. So that's yeah. that's awesome. Well, and that's that's the other thing too. Yeah. Is, uh, you know, pick up pick up a hobby. Uh, you know, of course, I was a professional musician for 30 years, but, you know, I stopped playing when I went into real estate full time. But since I've been sequestered and I got a lot of free time on my hands, I started picking up the guitar again. And then because of this gift we have of uh, uh, Zoom and, and FaceTime, I uh, came across a wonderful guy out of Sao Paulo, Brazil, who is just a monster player that has got just tons of free lessons on YouTube. And we've developed a friendship. And so I've been utilizing him as a tool, as a, as a teacher. So there, there's so many tools out there that you can access and utilize in YouTube that if you utilize this time wisely, uh, you'll actually increase your skills and maybe pick up some new ones.